Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Before I ask my question, I'd like to remind members of my register of interest in that I have let homes and homes that are part of service occupancies. To ask the Scottish Government how it will address the significant concerns raised by the Chair of the Regulatory Review Group regarding its proposed Heat in Buildings Bill. Minister Patrick Harvey. Thank you, Presiding Officer. As part of delivering the New Deal for Business, we asked the Regulatory Review Group to examine the business and regulation impact of our proposals for a Heat in Buildings Bill, which is central to our work to tackle climate change. We welcome the independent views of the group, along with all the submissions to the consultation which closed on Friday. The group has highlighted the economic opportunity for Scotland in transitioning to clean heat and identified key issues around communication, supply chain and phasing uh, on which we continue to work as we develop the bill. Edward Mountain. Hmm. Probably not how I read it, Minister. What I read was unrealistic deadlines, no knowledge of the extent of the issue, unawareness of the ability of the market readiness and total incomprehension of cost to householders and businesses. Given that at the moment, Minister, only 20% of the properties now on the market in Caithness reach EPCC, how does the Minister estimate it will cost individual homeowners to reach EPCC? Minister. Well, as part of our consultation uh, on the energy efficiency standards, we have proposed uh, a simpler approach to achieving those energy efficiency standards, as Mr Mountain knows, based on applying only those measures from a prescribed list of measures which are applicable in each building. And we're confident that in the large majority of uh, buildings that don't currently reach EPCC, the measures required would be relatively minimal and cost effective. Obviously, as we go forward in the heat and buildings bill and the regulations which will follow, we'll continue to keep our existing very generous package of grants and loans under constant review to make sure that the support available for people, householders, tenants, landlords and businesses matches the scale of the, the necessity of acting on reducing our emissions from heat and buildings. Edward Mountain. And yes, I am aware of those five items that are suggested, Minister, and you also suggested that you would put a price cap on it. Well, let me help you. If you're living in a two-bedroom rural property of traditional design of maybe 30 to 40 years old, as a surveyor, I can tell you I estimate the cost to get it to EPCC and to meet your requirements is in the region of £40,000. I'll repeat that, £40,000. So I'm concerned, Minister, that you haven't really grasped the reality of the costs of the problem and you don't really care at this stage what the cost of business and homeowners will be. Yeah. Will you commit to a tighter spending cap than £40,000 to homeowners to reach EPCC? And what do you consider, Minister, to be a reasonable amount? Minister. We've set out, as I've said, proposals for making this easier, simpler and cheaper for householders and businesses to, to reach the standards that are set out in the proposals we've consulted on. We'll take account of all of the responses to the consultation uh, and we'll continue, uh, as Mr Mountain is aware, to consider the option of a cost cap. But I'm concerned, presiding officer, that Mr Mountain and some of his colleagues don't seem to grasp the urgency of the challenge. There simply is no path to our net zero targets, which all political parties have committed to without an ambitious programme on heat in buildings. This government will continue with the action necessary to meet that, uh, that high aspiration of our heat in buildings programme, and we'll continue to make sure that there's a package of support available for people matching the support with the uh, scale of change that's necessary and that will be brought forward in the regulations. Thank you. Call Ivan McKee. Uh, thank you, President Officer. And can I uh, draw members' attention to my register of interest with respect to ownership of rental properties? Um, no one doubts the Minister's commitment to decarbonising heat and buildings, but of course commitment and delivery aren't necessarily the same thing. And developers in my constituency tell me that they're still permitted to build new houses with gas boilers and will continue to do so for the next two years 
at least. So can I ask uh, the Minister um, how many buildings have been decarbonised across the country since he, he took office two and a half years ago? And at that rate, how long will it take to deliver net zero across the remainder of Scotland's housing stock? Minister. Well, I'm very pleased that last year Parliament uh, did come together to pass the new build heat standard regulations, which come in from the 1st of April this year, preventing new buildings from being able to install polluting heating systems like gas boilers. Now, obviously, building warrants do last for up to three years. So at any point when that change was made, that would be the timescale over which it comes in. But we are acting a year ahead of the UK government. And in fact, the UK Climate Change Committee have urged the UK government to match our timescale on that. In terms of the number of installations, it has been accelerating, but I'm afraid it would make no sense to give a projection for how long it would take at the current rate. The whole point of this is to continue the acceleration in the installation of zero emission heating systems. That's what we've been doing. We need to continue to see that. And the heat and building proposals are absolutely central, not only to seeing that increased demand, but stimulating investment in supply chain skills and capacity to make sure that it happens. Douglas Walmsden. Uh, thank you, President Officer. The review, review group have said that consumers will be vulnerable to rogue traders if there is not sufficient capacity in the market to install new products. So can I ask the Minister what actions he is taking now to prevent rogue traders from entering the market? Minister. Well, in terms of the uh, grant and loan schemes, the government, the Scottish government funded schemes, uh, we do have a, a requirement on the uh, skills and qualifications of suppliers that people choose to use. We're also exploring the option of a supplier-led scheme instead of the consumer-led scheme, or as well as the consumer-led scheme that we currently have. But the regulation of consumer protection rests with the UK government. We continue to explore every option to discuss these issues. I see Mr Lumsden shaking his head at that. He wishes these issues to still continue to rest with the UK government. So it does him no credit to suggest that we shouldn't acknowledge where they have power on consumer protection, they need to act. And we stand ready to work in a constructive spirit to see improvements on consumer protection. But Mr Lumsden cannot expect us to exercise powers that he insists should remain at Westminster. Sarah Boyack. Thank you, Presiding Officer. That question there wasn't really answered directly by the Minister about reliable, trustworthy companies. So what work is the Scottish Government going to do to help fund support to deliver the skilled staff that we're clearly going to need right across Scotland so that there are affordable solutions, both for energy and heating options, given the £33 billion of investment expected to be required and the current cost of living crisis that householders in both urban and rural areas have? Where is the Scottish Government going to step up to help tackle this problem? Minister. I recently took part in a roundtable with uh, industry stakeholders across the supply chain, and the very clear indication that they gave to me was that what industry needs to be able to invest, not only in skills uh, uh, qualifications, but also in the, the capacity of the supply chain, is demand assurance, unlocking that demand. And that's very much what the heat and buildings proposals set out to achieve. We do need to ensure that, that uh, high standards are met. Some of the regulation of consumer protection, as I've said, rests with the UK government. In terms of our own uh, uh, powers, we do ensure that the grant and loan schemes do require that people use qualified and trusted installers. Uh, and we also work with UK-wide bodies like the MCS, which is uh, going to be relaunching uh, its uh, criteria later this year to reduce some of the barriers to certification for small and independent contractors. Mark Ruskell. Last year, the clean heat industry wrote to the First Minister urging the Scottish Government to move forward with its heat and buildings bill as soon as possible. They said that to meet the challenge and maximise opportunities, industry needs certainty and that new standards would allow homeowners, landlords and supply chains to understand what they need to do and by when. So given that clear steer from industry, does the Minister agree that calls from opposition parties for delay and dilution go against what businesses are telling us they need to deliver the heat transition with the urgency that's required to tackle the climate emergency? Minister. 
Mark Ruskell is absolutely right. The the single message which is most consistent from both industry and from the experts like the UK Climate Change Committee is that government needs to give certainty and clarity. That's what the heat in buildings programme and the proposals we've consulted on will achieve. By regulating, by passing legislation, this parliament will give a very clear signal that it is worth the while of businesses in this sector to invest, as many of them want to do. Many of them know that there are high quality careers to be had in Scotland, not only doing the work of installing, but doing the work of innovating as well. Businesses are ready to go on this. They need our clarity and support uh, about the long term direction of travel. That's what our legislation intends to achieve. Any dilution, delay or deflection, which some opposition members seem to be wishing to have, would only undermine the opportunity to get the maximum economic benefit for Scotland from this heat transition, as well as the carbon emission reductions. Liam MacArthur. Thank you. The Minister referred earlier to um, the concerns around supply chain capacity. Given the steep rise in demand that is anticipated, does he recognise there are particular issues in terms of supply chain capacity in rural and island areas, and what uh, action is the government taking to ensure that that capacity is there to meet the future demand? Minister. Absolutely. And I, I recently took part in a, a meeting specifically looking to get the views of rural uh, uh, community stakeholders from rural, remote and island communities uh, who've made very constructive uh, proposals. In fact, the benefits of the heat transition are very often uh, even more significant in remote, rural and island communities. Many of them uh, not on the gas grid, for example, and paying higher prices for for energy, the transition to zero emission heating can save them money as well as saving emissions. One of the examples that I referred to a few minutes ago uh, of reducing the barriers to accreditation under the MCS scheme is one of the things that we can do working with uh, other organisations to make sure that in those communities, small businesses and independent contractors who are currently active in this field are able to be accredited uh, and that will increase the ability of uh, businesses that have their roots in those local communities and a degree of local trust being able to undertake this work.